What's up everybody, the legend of W is back, finally back, in near reincarnation. So in the last video, I went through the previous record event called Den of Darkness. So if you haven't seen the last video, make sure to go ahead and check it out. Now, we are currently celebrating the first anniversary of near reincarnation in Japan, but that's not the point of this video. We're gonna go to subquests and go through the brand new record event called Foundation of Fortune, which includes Lars, which I think this is the first time I've seen him in, in a record event. I, I don't remember right now. It, it's been a while. But anyways, we have Lars, and let's just go to the exchange. We have uh, his celebratory soldier variant, and of course, the Blade of Begging which is a fire one-handed sword. We have the duplicates, we have the premium summon tickets, the mama medals, pretty much all the same usual stuff that we farm, 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 farm. Now, I'm not sure what the story is about, but I don't know, is, is he gonna get rich? I mean, I guess. Anyways, let's figure it out and start with quest one. Record Fountain of Fortune, part one. A military base stands on the front lines in a war with another country. In one of its hidden corners, a young boy sits alone. He's a loner type. His cheerless gaze is enough to fend off any who might seek to keep his company. Hmm. He sharpens his blade. An act which serves as wordless warning for the man who ended his parents' life. Oof. But at that moment, another soldier approaches. Uh-oh. Somebody's the grin daring. on his face suggests a scheme is in motion. Captain what kind Mercy, of scheme? He says. The boy grimaces despite himself. He does not believe he has done anything to warrant punishment. Yet he knows he has done nothing to merit praise. So he's gonna get punished anyway. Ah, damn. This confusion annoys him. As does the constant thin smile of his compatriot. It's just a trap. I, I can feel it. After a moment, he arrives at a decision. Okay. What is he, he will play along for the time being. Yeah, sure. Uh, fine. Yeah. The boy follows the other man, who soon leads them to a group of their fellow soldiers. Uh-oh, we're gonna have a big fight. Uh, he tenses, his hands curling into fists as he readies himself for a fight. And then... And then... We hey. survived the year. Yeah! Let's get drunk. A raucous cheer erupts from the group. As the soldiers embrace each other with whoops of pure joy, the boy stands off to the side, dumbstruck. <laughs> but when the drinking songs begin, he finally forces himself to accept the situation. Okay. They didn't bring me here to torture me. They brought me here to celebrate. Fortune. Yes, I get the title now. Cool, so let's see what happens at the party. Wave three, big boy is back. And he dies to 2B's hands. Record, Fountain of Fortune, part two. As the boy enjoys the celebratory feast, his squad mates raise their voices in a round of merry boasting. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. I was a demon out there. The enemy ran as soon as they saw me coming. Oh, here we go. We're bragging now. Okay. Yeah. But I'm the one who claimed their leader's head. Hmm. The boy finds himself shaking his head in silent disapproval of this carefree swagger. Suddenly, a glass of strong drink is placed in his hand. Yeah. 
Enjoying yourself? Asks a calm voice. It's the captain. It belongs to their leader. The one they all call Captain Craven behind his back. The men of the squad have long scoffed at how quick their captain is to retreat from battle. And the boy shares their dim view of his competence. Damn. Forgot about that. How was this year for you? Continues the man. Though the questions are meant as the easiest of small talk, they lay as stones on the boy's heart. For despite an entire year of searching, the object of his revenge remains as distant as when he began. Thinking oh. of this, shame suddenly pierces his chest like a bullet, and he absently tosses the cup aside. I don't drink. Come on, the crisp Captain. The shattering of glass brings the hall to silence. Oh. Thick red liquid slowly pools across the ground. I mean, look. If you're given a drink, I mean, well, first and foremost, you need to be 21 and older to drink, okay? Somebody gives you a drink. I mean, you know, somebody you know. Like, here, here's a drink, and you just throw it? Like, that's bad. It's pretty bad. Disrespectful. It reminds him of his parents. Oh. Ignoring the captain, ignoring his companions, the boy bolts up from his seat and flees the hall. Wow. Round three. You're gonna die. What did I tell you? Record Foundation of Fortune Part 3. When the boy finally stops running, he finds himself in an unremarkable spot some distance from camp. His body is quaking with shame, regret, rage. Damn. Rage. What have I even been doing for the last year? Buffeted on all sides by his sense of helplessness, he erupts in a scream, launching every vile oath he knows into the uncaring wind. Okay, yeah, gotta let it out. Uh. But as he fights to regain the breath he expended on his outburst, uh -oh. the captain suddenly appears. The boy shoots him a glare filled with resentment. With his fevered breathing finally under a modicum of control, he stares at the man and issues his own order. Mm. You will send me to the battlefield. Wait, what? That that's not what it says. Uh, error, error. You will put me on the front lines of the next fight. The captain's eyes waver as he attempts to read his subordinate. He's a coward through and through, thinks the boy smugly. He'll do it. He has no choice. Hmm. But instead, the captain shakes his head and meets the boy's stunned gaze. Why? No, he says. I will not. That's right. Go, Captain. Don't tell me what to do. I won't send out a soldier who isn't ready. That's right, you're not ready, Lars. The boy's brow furrows with a mixture of doubt and surprise. <laughs> but the Captain continues, almost as if trying to provoke him. Your worries control you. You know that, right? <laughs> and if that doesn't change... You will fail. Ooh. Letting him know. Yeah, uh -oh. The words are a jagged thorn in the boy's very soul. Yeah, he did not like that. Unable to control himself, he lets out a feral scream and rushes his captain. So oh boy. But the other man only looks back at him with an expression of profound pity. 
Damn. I pity you, child. Well, let's see if he lands a hit. Die! That's it. Record. Foundation of Fortune Part 4. The final part. The boy's vision is red. His mind madness. He can think of nothing save savaging the human standing in front of him. So he punched his neck? But his assault finds only empty air. Mmm. The captain sees through his attack and sidesteps it with a casual grace that speaks to his long years of experience. Just too easy. The boy stumbles as he misses, his arms flailing pitifully in the air. Pathetic. A moment later, one hand makes a sad thump of contact with the captain's chest before slowly slipping away. The boy is crestfallen beyond all measure. But rather than chiding the boy, the captain takes a step back and speaks to him in a calm and measured tone. Hmm. You have things you want to accomplish. I know this. And that's why I'm so, so proud that you made it through the year. You're making progress. And if you can just manage to stay alive, I know you'll do great things. That's right. Don't rush. The boy stares back at him, stunned. The past year, the same one he had written off as a failure not a minute before, was now being acknowledged as a rousing success. Confused, whoa, whoa. the boy spins on a heel and begins to walk away, but the captain calls after him. We'll celebrate next year, too. The boy continues walking, muttering a single word. Oh, what... what word? Whatever. Whatever. And yet, the rage he so clearly felt does not hang so heavily on him now. Good. It's as if clouds have parted ever so slightly on the turbulent storm of his heart. He finds this feeling to be terrifying. I mean, you let it For go. if but... his anger departs, what is left of him? Calm. Just completely zen, which feels good. I don't think he should complain. Anyways, uh, that is going to be it. Um, I thought we would see more some that I don't know. Uh, unlocked record foundation of fortune hard. All right, everybody, that is going to be it for now. So Lars was just very angry and he needed to let that out because, I mean, he was driving himself crazy. I mean, rage inside. That's, that's very unhealthy. So thankfully, the captain was there and he helped him out. I mean, he put him in this place, but he helped him out in the end. Uh, so anyways, let me know what you think about this story. Uh, I, I kind of was hoping for a little bit more besides an internal conflict but i mean i guess it's fine we get to learn about the characters a little bit more but anyways that is going to be it everybody so thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like subscribe and of course make sure to hit the bell notification so that way you know when i upload next time i sincerely appreciate the support and i'll see you in the next video i don't, I don't know when the next near reincarnation video will come out but i mean content i feel like content's been kind of slow anyways i'll see you later in the next video peace